Okay, hi guys, welcome back to our channel. We are the brothers from Ghana. Today we have a surprise for you on the diaspora chit chat. We have Kojo Chum Bayuma. I don't want to mention his other name. He's Kojo Chum Bayuma, whether he likes it or not. But you can call him Jay. So we have Jay today on Brothers from Ghana on our diaspora chit chat. Welcome to Ghana, Jay. Thank you. I, I like uh, the name, uh, <laughs> and that is my official local name. Yeah, yeah, Ghanaian, once, okay. you, once you talk to us. Thank you. <laughs> These are my brothers from God. My, my new brothers from God. I've been, yeah. I've been admiring what you all have been doing. Yeah. And thank you for uh, having me on your platform and, and having this conversation. Thank you for coming, actually. We really appreciate you showing up for this conversation. How long have you been in Ghana? All right, on and off, because I go back and forth between okay. the states, because I have family and life in the states and okay. businesses in the states. Okay. So I, I came here, I've uh, been here June, so June, and then I went back for a few weeks. So here we are in November. So uh, your first entry was June 2021? No, 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 no. The first time I came to Ghana was November 2018. Okay. And then I brought a group of people because I bring groups in. So I brought okay. a group of people back uh, in uh, 2019. And then COVID came. I brought two groups in 2019 and COVID came. 2020 was done. Uh, that's when I took the time to write my children's book series about Ghana and other uh, African countries. That's the Adventures of Darren and Destiny. So that's blowing up now. But then, I, but then in 2021, uh, at the end of 2020, I said, I'm not going to let 2021 be a bust. I came back to Ghana at the end of 2020. Okay. And I said, I'm going to bring people back in 2021. Set a goal. Uh, and we're approaching 100 people coming to Ghana that we brought back this wow. year and so wow. it's been amazing that wow. people have been willing to trust us with this journey yeah. and uh and if you look at the video content you can see what they say you can see how their experience has been uh life transforming they yeah. in their own words and that's what that's so it, it was a good move yeah today we are going to get a bit personal with you okay before we get to where you bring people in yes what inspired you to choose ghana in the first place way back 2018 i was looking uh, and this is no slight on any country, yeah. Because no, sure, 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 sure. because get because, it. because the <laughs> the word on the street is that I, I, I'm partial to Ghana, <laughs> okay. uh, and I'm not partial to Ghana in the sense of it being a favorite. I don't have a favorite African country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't have yeah, a favorite. Together. I don't go. I mean, I find something to love in each one. But I was looking for a country that had a balance because there's some countries that are very contemporary. So like if I go there, it's no different than going to DC. I, I live in the DC area. So I didn't want to go to Africa looking for DC. I didn't want to go to Africa looking for America. And I think personally, I think that would have been a mistake for me. And I know a lot of people who go looking for America, but then they miss out on the experience that I've had. Yeah. And, and so I said, well, Ghana's the perfect balance because it's contemporary enough. It wasn't going to be so much of a culture shock that it was a distraction. And, but it was traditional enough to where I could come and really get into the culture. And that's what happened. So 2018, I came and the uh, minute I got off the plane, I became angry <laughs> because I realized how much I've been, you know, really misled. Uh, <laughs> okay. I said, yeah, I said, don't come, it's gonna be bad, it's horrible. And that wasn't my experience when I first got off the plane. I mean, I saw some of the things that they talked about, like some of the dirt roads and all of that, but they have dirt roads in America. I mean, yeah. you go to Arkansas and South Carolina and Virginia and places in rural areas, I mean, 50 years ago, there were dirt roads everywhere. So I, I started looking at this and, and realizing that my mind had been toyed with. And that's why I said, I have to, one, bring people. Okay. But then I also have to tell a different story okay. so people can learn and see. All right. So Jay here is doing a very good job. After he experienced Ghana himself, he took it upon himself to bring people, other people, to experience Ghana as well. So let me congratulate you and then thank you for doing this for Ghana. Are you a Ghanaian? Do you have any kind of... I do have Ghanaian DNA. See, wow. one of the things about those of us who are part of the African diaspora is that in our ancestry, many of us have most of West Africa. Okay. So I have I really, I'm thinking about from Senegal all the way down through South Africa, and I have a nice percentage of Kenya. Wow. It popped up in there. I was like, well, where did Kenya come from? <laughs> uh, and, and, I, and I know people who kind of laugh at DNA tests and all of that. Yeah. Uh, but I tell, before I even took my first DNA test, I had done my genealogy, I had done the history, the family right. tree, and I only did a DNA test to see whether or not it was bogus. Cause I was, yeah. you know, I was one of those skeptical people like, yeah, them DNA tests, you know, they yeah. could rig it. So when, what happened with the DNA test did, it confirmed everything I found through the historical records, everything that I searched through the census. Through, and I said, well, it started linking me to cousins, 
that I knew, I knew they were my cousins, cousins yeah. but the, the company didn't know it. Then it started okay. linking me to people that I didn't know, but they were lining up with my family history. Wow. And then it started linking me, and this is something else I do now, I have people here take the DNA test in West Africa. Okay. And it links them to people in America. Okay. And so when people say, oh no, this didn't happen. I said, well, how, how are these people related? And, wow. and they've never even been in the same so, yeah. so is, yeah. is, is all of this bogus? Yeah. I tell people there are people who are in jail right now because of DNA and paying child support because of DNA. <laughs> I mean, it, it has something has to be relevant somewhere yeah. along the line. So yeah, yeah. so it's, it's I mean, but that's what it's done for me and for so many other people. When you see these images, it wakes you up, and and you want to learn more and you want to explore more, yeah. and that's what you see me doing, and that's why I love all of the countries I've been. I've been to ten African countries. Wow. To wow. the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow. I've seen the world from the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow. It's that that's like a different world in and of itself. Wow. I've learned the history in South Africa and seen and learned about Hector Peterson and in their uh, uh, quote unquote civil rights movement. I learned about the Afrikaans and the colors and in this that whole uh, history of uh, being to Nigeria and seeing I've uh, been to uh, Badagri, I've been to Bunce Island in Sierra Leone, been to Togo, been to Benin, been to wow, Cote d'Ivoire, wow, I can go on and on, been to Ethiopia, been to Lali Bella, I can just keep going. Wow. So so that's the beauty of it all. Yeah. You're doing, you're doing a good job, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're more or less like a brother. Yeah. You're, you're a Ghanaian now, you know? Yes. So I, have, I, oh, yeah. I, got my, I love it. I love being, I love the Ghanaian Jollof rice. Uh, I'm not going to get into whose Jollof rice is better. I'm not. I'm going to no, leave that alone. But we all know. You'll get there. We all know. We all know it's Ghana. So okay. So talking about Jollof, let's talk about food. Yes. How, how do you cope with the food? The well, Ghanaian food. Well, or well, not? <laughs> well, at first the food was uh, a <laughs> little, little, little difficult because I got that old brony stomach. Yeah. So yeah, you got that old brony stomach. So the spices, I was like, ooh. I said okay, but I said I'm determined yeah. to do to to really master this. I love wache is my favorite. Wow. Yeah, wache is that that's the deal because it reminds me of black eyed peas and rice from South Carolina. Okay. And so that's what we cook it. It's called a hoppin' john in South Carolina. Uh, I love the jollof because it reminds me of red rice in South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, that whole area, Charleston area. Um, I love banku. And I mean, I've eaten more plantains than I've ever eaten in my life. I've eaten bananas, <laughs> eat bananas in America. Unless I go to the Jamaican spot, go get me some rice and peas and get some plantains. But yeah. it's like seeing all these cultural similarities is, 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 um, is amazing. But the cuisine, I love Ghanaian food now. Now I know the food. Now I'm sitting here eating it and I'm eating with yeah. my hands now. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, five step, we eat with our hands in America. We get the pizza and the, and the hamburger. We're picking the fries, so we eat yeah. with our hands. But I'm sitting there dipping it in and, and <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. So for your experience, I was very surprised when you told me you've had some cultural shocks visiting Africa. Have you had any cultural culture shocks? Did you get any cultural shocks visiting Africa or Ghana specifically? No. Um, that's that. Normally, I'm pretty quick with my answers, but I was like, no, I'm trying to think culture shock. Culture. Yeah. I'm pretty adaptable. Okay. And I go with the flow. So I'm trying to think if I've had a culture shock not a culture shock because I mentally prepared myself before coming before coming to leave yeah. my country to leave DC to leave America to leave South Carolina to leave them there and to come uh, things that have maybe caught me off guard uh, I don't even know if it caught me off guard like the goats but they have goats in South Carolina <laughs> they have chickens running around in South Carolina you go out to the country you go get some chickens and goats yeah. and pigs and uh, no, it's the, the the hustle is real. Yeah, <laughs> the hustle is real all over the world. But I love that though. I love I love it. I mean, it's so. Uh, the way oh, here's the culture shock. The way you all drive, y'all <laughs> drive like oh my my my. <laughs> but I rarely see accidents. So it's like it's a skill. It's yeah, like they have yeah, accidents, yeah. but it's like it's a skill. Y'all yeah. y'all come in to do this thing, and I'm like, let me find out. I'm waiting for somebody to hit. Uh, but but it's, I think that's the biggest culture shock, the driving. Well, do you think you can drive in Ghana? Of course. Absolutely. Aside all the shocks, you, know, you think you can, you can cope with the drivers Absolutely. and how they do their things on the road? Man, I climb Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> I can drive in Ghana. I like that. I, 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 can't wait to see, I can't wait to sit at the front of your car to see how you're going to be shouting at the drivers like, move, Well, move. you know how we do in America. See, this is the thing. At least you all don't shoot each other. In America, you cut somebody off in the wrong city, 
they pulling out guns, killing, <laughs> fighting, beating down people. So it's a different kind of system <laughs> over there. Okay. They, they, they try okay. to make it sound like paradise, but you <laughs> do some of the stuff I see here. Man, folks jumping out the car with bats and guns, and so it's uh, that's what I can handle it here. You know, a, a driver once told me his name, Mr. TT. He said, "If you don't take it by force, you'll sit there all day." He was talking about driving in traffic. Okay. He said, "You got to take this thing by force." I said, "All right, well now, now I understand." So I went back to America driving. I'm taking everything by force. <laughs> I'm driving through the. I said, "Just let me not get shot. Let me not cut off the wrong person. Take it by force because they're gonna come do something by force." If you just join us, this is Brothers from Ghana. We have Jay with us here. Jay, you can call him Kojo Chumberima. He's a Ghanaian now, so you can call him Kojo Chumberima. We have him with us on African Diaspora Chit Chat segment. So apart from the African Diaspora Chit Chat segment, we do a lot of things on this channel. You could see the BFG discoveries. You could see Explore with Brothers, as you can see my shirt. That's right. Yeah, That's what X, a, X P L O R E. Yeah, Explore with X. Brothers dot com. Yeah. yeah. So what we do basically is just like we ha we made you have an experience. So. We are here to make you have an experience when you come to Ghana. So, Jay, before we, we sign up, um, what would you tell people who haven't even thought about traveling to Africa or traveling to Ghana? What would you tell them? I would tell them to come see for yourself because I know the education system that we have in America and what they have taught us, what they haven't taught us. I know the late night infomercials, how they made, you, know, you th think about sick, cho sick children with flies and the, yeah. uh, coming out of their mouths and everything. And, and so they've made it to where it's unattractive from a vacation standpoint, but you rarely see, if ever, the beautiful beaches, yeah. the rooftop restaurants. Yeah. Uh, and even if it's not that type of experience, even the cultural side of it being among the people. So you're really missing out. I mean, if, if all you know is America and, and American culture, which is wonderful in and of itself, don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, sure, I'm not sure, knocking sure. America. Sure. And, I mean, and, and, like, I'm, I'm not knocking it. But what I'm saying is, is that it's limited. Yeah. And some people think that that is like the, the supreme and, and really, in many ways, I say that's another effect of colonization because this part of the world, I'm, I mean, I'm just looking at the Atlantic right now. I'm thinking about the foods that I've, I'm thinking about the relationships that I've established with yeah. people yeah. that I would have missed out on yeah. had I stayed in that box. But then I think about when I go back and how I'm able to introduce, to bridge the gap to where somebody could come and see and a relationship can be formed and a business can be started. Yeah. Uh, that's why I say come see for yourself and be a part of this. Don't get hung up in this government, this, this government, that. Come be among the people and understand and it will broaden your mind, it'll broaden your perspective and you'll really become a different person as a result. And, uh, and then lastly, another way that I do it is through my children's book series, The Adventures okay. of Darren and Destiny. Okay. And they, go on the same African adventures that I go on. I have books from Ghana, uh, Zanzibar, uh, uh, the safari in Tanzania, the book climbing on Kilimanjaro. Okay. Uh, yeah, so all of this is a part of being able to expose people to, okay. and the first book was Ghana. Oh, okay. So yeah, so that's the deal. So, and that's the one that everybody's loving. And I mean, they love them all, but that's the one that was the, the, the flagship book, if that, if the, so, the do, you, do you have the books on Amazon? Or? Yeah, they're on Amazon and they're also on DarrenAndDestiny.com. And uh, of course, they can find more information out on the channel, Maximum Impact with Jay Cameron. And of course, uh, you can follow me on IG at Jay Cameron Official and see all the good stuff we have going on. I'm going to do a meetup here in sure. Ghana. Yeah, we so need to. I, we I need think to we, we will have your links placed down um, the, 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 the in the, the yeah. description. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. But there, I have a quick um, yeah. question I want to find out. I want you to um, tell us one of the rumors you heard about Africa before coming to Africa. Oh, that those Africans don't like us. Okay. Those Africans, those Africans, those Africans okay. don't like us, and that would come from other so-called African Americans. Okay. Those Africans don't like us, and I'm not going over there. And I know the Africans here in America, so I don't need to go over there and see them. I mean, we're like real disdain. I mean, it's like something. And but the funny part, or the sad part, is that that's the same way the narrative is told about Black communities in America: okay. crime, poverty, sickness. And, and so that, that's why you have a lot of uh, so-called African-Americans who don't even want to associate with black Blacks, neighborhoods yeah. Yeah. in America. So you, it, it has a lot of layers to it. Yeah. Uh, but that's some of what I've heard. And I mean, some of it I've seen, so I'm not going to say none of it, but it's like somebody would pick the one thing and say, this is what the whole narrative is. And then you're sitting there and you're like, well, that's just one person or that's one group of people. But then there are billion, there's a billion plus people here. And all I can say is gotta see for yourself. And 
when you see. And, and then don't don't worry about because work people worry about family and friends and what they're going to say about them coming and all of that. Uh, I don't I don't worry about that. I do what I need to do. And yeah. if somebody doesn't like it, hey, it is what it is. It's my life. I live my life. How Mary J say, na 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 na. In my life, you know so. <laughs> so <laughs> you are about, you are about saying about some meetups. Yeah, what I want to do is um, for uh, for my Ghanaian family because like, everywhere I go, I'm being spotted. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do a meetup okay. where uh, folks in Ghana. We can do a meet and greet. I can meet them. They can meet me, yeah. and I think that'll be really cool to be. It's actually to... exclusive on our channel. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, this is the first time I've said anything about <laughs> yeah. it. This meetup, yeah. uh, and so you can follow. Uh, you you guys can. I'll keep you up to date with yeah, it, we need and to, make yeah. sure that you all you all be a part of this meetup too. Yeah, so yeah. maybe we can meet all of us. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we should, we and, should. Uh, and I'll reach out to some of some other uh, influencers yeah. here. But uh, I really would like to meet the people in Ghana because everyone has been so receptive and so hospitable. It's yeah. just, it, it is what it is. So. Yeah, we can do this. I think we could do this together anytime. That's how we yeah. bridge the gap. Of course. Yeah. So thank you for being with us. That's time with Kodo Chumberima, Jane. See you next time. <laughs>